This Wednesday, President Biden is set to head back to Washington, D.C., bringing an end to a two-week vacation that saw the president and his family relaxing on the sunny beaches of South Carolina and Delaware. The commander-in-chief has been out of office since August 10th, officially setting him ahead of Presidents Obama and Trump for most time away from the White House at this point during their terms. This is according to the New York Post's unofficial tally. Republicans, of course, are keeping the president honest on his r, &R time. According to the official GOP Twitter account, Biden has spent 35 percent of his term on vacation. As we covered on the show yesterday, new NBC polling reveals nearly 75 percent of Americans don't believe the country is headed in the right direction under President Biden. The reason, according to uh, correspondent Yamiche Elsendor, may surprise you. Let's watch. Yamiche, why are people so unhappy these days? Jose, it's a great question. And I've been out on the campaign trail. I'm in Alabama just today talk, doing some stories about sort of redistricting and the, and the political atmosphere in this state. But what you see really is on the Democratic side, people that are very, very worried about the direction of this country. They're very worried, especially about former President Trump possibly coming back into power or former President Trump or, or another Republican stealing the election in 2022 or 2024 because we've seen so many election deniers be be elected. So a lot of Democrats on the Democratic side, they're very worried about abortion also and abortion rights. And then on the Republican side, I can tell you that I'm also hearing from people that especially some that are unfortunately believing conspiracy theories and lies about the election of 2020. They're worried that the country is going in the wrong direction because they're seeing too many people um, say that the election was free and fair, which of course it was. I think that's some wishful thinking for why people think the country is headed in the wrong direction. I don't think it's because of Trump. It's just, it's <laughs> That's very, such vapid commentary. It, it's telling that her pundit orientation is to only come up with pundit reasons why people are upset. Right. People are upset, according to her, Yamiche, because they've been watching the television, following polls, and are very concerned about midterms. Look, people on both sides of the aisle are upset about their life because they're just both very concerned about midterm outcomes. There's not a what single comment. What's happened to our democracy, Brianna? <laughs> I, I can't even go on because of our democracy. No one talks like that. I, I can't think, you know, I was at the grocery store trying to put overpriced produce in my cart, mm -hmm. and all I could think about was impending midterms mm -hmm. and what the outcomes were going to be. I was filling up my, my gas tank. But really, you know, as the numbers mm -hmm. whizzed by mm -hmm. in dozens and dozens and dozens of dollars, I, I, all I could think about was, were the Democrats going to hold on to the Senate? Like, right. that's such a second order concern. Why does it matter if you win midterms or not? Why does it matter if one party or the other is in office? It's because people are hopeful that certain conditions that have existed under Republican and Democratic candidates alike are going to change. And my read is that they're very skeptical that regardless of who wins, there's going to be a manifestly different outcome for them in their personal lives. So maybe on some level, she's right. The only thing that really will change in terms of outcomes is the literal numbers on the paper of who controls the House and the Senate, as opposed to these larger substantive issues that have caused Americans over time in both parties to be increasingly frustrated with the government and politically disaffected. It's one thing to say the president, the current president, is not entirely responsible for everything that's wrong with the economy. You know, these are a bunch of factors that build up over time. It's one thing to say that. It's another thing to say that the guy who isn't even president right now, <laughs> his theoretical possible return is what ha people think is wrong with the country right now. That is some pundit brain. Is, that is yeah. uh, a lot. That's the, the um, it's always sunny in Philadelphia, Charlie at the whiteboard with the thing. <laughs> yeah, <sighs> look, look, and if Democrats keep that up, they're, they're going to reap what they sow. They, it's unfortunate to frame it this way, but they really, they really, uh, got a, a, a lucky a lucky outcome with the, the Dobbs decision. They really were handed a gift. Yes, I, and she did mention that. And on that, you know, I agree. It, it, regardless of what you think about the issue, and I, I totally accept that some conservatives say, you know, this was a major policy win that we have wanted for decades. So if it hurts us short term in, in terms of winning elections, so be it. Because, again, what, the object is not to elect, like electing people is not the goal itself. The goal is to 
create policy that you support, and many conservatives want this policy. So I totally understand them. They might very well say, yes, it has clearly hurt us. Um, I, I think, honestly, what's hurting them the most is probably some of these uh, then state by state you know, areas where they want to go and you know, criminalize abortion to a, to a degree that is so far outside what uh, the average or mainstream American wants. Well, look, if, if they had upheld Dobbs, if, if the Supreme Court had simply upheld the, whatever it was, the 14 week or 15 week abortion mm -hmm. ban in Mississippi that was the subject of Dobbs, I think it could have been a cleaner win for Republicans. They would have actually won on the merits, they would have chipped away at Roe, you know, and they would have basically landed on an abortion provision that the overwhelming majority of Americans agree with. Most Americans right. want there to be, you know, the right to choose, but have a smaller right. window of when they think that that's appropriate. That was the Dobbs decision, and like frankly, like our peer country, France, exactly as many Republicans pretty reasonable have cut off to out. me. Exactly now, and that would have been a loss meaningfully for the mm -hmm. left, but not this kind of loss. And I, I the, the the court decided, and the, the 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 plaintiffs in Dobbs pushed for the court to decide a broader question than just the 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 question of the Mississippi law. Now everyone's going to have to see how that falls out, but it will be a real shame if Democrats fail to learn a lesson in this moment about their unwillingness to actually provide substantively for the American people because they end up winning simply because of Dobbs. You have Biden out here about to lift the student debt moratorium that's been saving millions of Americans, 44 million plus of Americans from having to pay thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars I was picking up on some, there's some energy on student loans, right? Aren't they planning to maybe do something? Yeah, so that's the, that's the issue that Biden, it's looking, it's looking like he's going to cancel up to ten thousand dollars worth of debt for people who make under one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars a year, which of course is not what he campaigned on and what he promised to do. He promised to cancel a minimum of ten thousand dollars of debt, regardless of what you think he should do. He's lying about his campaign promise. He's blatantly lying about his campaign promise and throwing people who voted him on the condition of what he promised under the bus. And so lifting the moratorium, as I, I just was tweeting this to someone who said, my daughter has $300,000 of debt and she's happy with the $10,000 of debt cancellation, Brianna, so why are you so upset? And I pointed out to her that if her daughter, in fact, does have $300,000 of debt and she has interest rates the, kind, the likes of which I had, that's $24,000 in interest alone per year that she's not having to pay under the moratorium. And she can instead put that $24,000 a year to paying down her principal, as so many people ha are doing. This is the first time many of us have been able to actually chip away at the principal balance and pay off our loans like everybody has been asking us to do. If you lift the moratorium and just throw 10000 less than $10,000 at some people, what you're going to get is a lot of folks who are in a much more difficult uh, financial situation than they have been throughout COVID, and you're going to feel it. And I, I think that Joe Biden is going to also feel it at the, at the polls, or the Democrats are going to feel it at the polls. Well, we shall see. More rising right after this.